in behalf po of DOSTITDI, welcome to webinar on chemical safety and hazardous waste management. Part pa rin po ito ng DOSTITDI webinar series. Uh, we hope po that you are all doing well and safe amid this time of pandemic, especially po those who need to go to work pa rin po. Ano? Doble ingat po tayo yung maintain social distancing po and uh, syempre po yung mga PPEs natin. By the way, I am Karen S. Cruz. I will be your moderator for this webinar together with my colleagues, Ms. Cristina Candelaria, who coordinated this webinar. Um, the one handling the technical naman po is si Mr. Mark Argel Tutorio. And of course, si Ms. Nam Ganotisi po, ang ating chat moderator for today. We are all from the Regional Cooperation and Training Section of the Technological Services Division of DOSTITDI. So our topic po is about chemical safety and hazardous waste management. Uh, this will provide awareness on chemical safety, understand the importance of chemical safety through recognizing and minimizing hazards and to, be, to become aware of the preparations we need for emergencies. We will also know today what is hazardous waste management? What are some examples of hazardous waste? We're in laboratories or of universities, colleges and research institutions, including clinics, hospitals and testing facilities will benefit from this webinar. Okay, so malalaman po natin kung paano natin may ensure that our laboratories are uh, eco-friendly. Okay, uh, but before we start with our webinar, nais po namin ipakilala muna ang aming ahensya, the Industrial Technology Development Institute or ITDI is a research and development institute under Department of Science and Technology to present our services. Uh, please watch our video. Live, 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 live through science, technology, and innovation. We contribute in making local industries globally competitive. We are the Industrial Technology Development Institute, one of the foremost research and development institutes of the Department of Science and Technology, or DOST. To accomplish all these, we focus on our three major functions, research and development, technical services, and technology transfer. ITDI leads the way in multi-industrial R&D. Our humble beginnings can be traced back to the Bureau of Government Laboratories, established on July 1, 1901 during Jean, later renamed into the Bureau of Science in 1905. With studies focusing heavily on public health as needed by the times, scientists developed tiki-tiki from rice bran to combat berry bear. Several changes in names, the BS in 1958 became the National Institute of Science and Technology, IST. Industrial R&D started gaining ground harnessing local resources and skills towards self-sufficiency and optimized productivity. Finally, in 1987, NIST transformed full gear into an industrial R&D institute and was aptly named Industrial Technology Development Institute or ITDI. ITDI R&D now focuses on five major areas, all aimed at supporting and answering the needs of concerned industries. Food Processing we conduct R&D of local food materials and resources and upgrade the quality of local food products and productivity of the food industry. Material Science We conduct R&D to develop materials essential to local industries and for industrial purposes using locally available resources. Chemicals and Energy We conduct R&D studies on the production of organic inorganic and pharmaceutical chemicals and substances and energy technologies systems from indigenous raw materials 
for industrial applications. Environment and Biotechnology R&D focuses on environmental concerns and specializes in applied microbiology. We develop ways and means to manage domestic and industrial wastes from various sources. Packaging Technology We strive to make local industries and their products globally competitive through world-class, innovative, and sustainable packaging technology. Aside from R&D, ITDI also provides technical services to help make local industries meet global standards, improve their productivity, and make them ready to compete in the international arena. These are carried out through tests and analyses of various products and processes, metrology services, and knowledge translation or technology transfer and commercialization initiatives. ITDI's national laboratories that are equipped with a state-of-the-art equipment and ISO accredited take the lead in providing the technical services needed by industry. Its National Metrology Laboratory, or NML, establishes and maintains the national measurement standards for physical quantities such as mass, temperature, pressure, voltage, resistance, luminous intensity, and time interval and their dissemination to Filipino users, ensuring that these are accurate and internationally traceable. While tests and analysis and performance testing of various products and materials are provided by its standards and testing division using current or updated methods and instruments, its rubber testing facility has been upgraded by acquiring state-of-the-art testing equipment to enable it to offer complete testing services for manufactured rubber and be aligned with ASEAN integration. STD is also one of the pillars of One Lab, an IT-based referral system wherein the services of participating laboratories are integrated to hasten and broaden public access to testing services of laboratories nationwide in one click. Meanwhile, Admatel or Advanced Device and Materials Testing Laboratory is the country's most advanced failure analysis and materials characterization testing facility, enabling local industries to have their products tested locally, ensuring faster turnaround time and savings. In addition, ITDI's Nanolab provides nanotechnology-related technical services and R&D, testing and developing nanomaterials for various industrial applications. And for all these innovations and services to reach the production sector that may lead to the creation of businesses, ITDI conducts knowledge translation or technology transfer program. ITDI actively engages the use of quad media, radio, television, print, online, social media, and exhibitions to promote its technologies and services. These are complemented with other technology transfer initiatives such as technology offerings, consultative meetings or industry engagements, TRA, trainings, all aimed at accelerating or increasing the chances for technology adoption, application. Through the years, we tirelessly contributed in laying the foundation for SDI in the country ever committed to implement and achieve our mission. Remaining faithful to our core values. As we surge further into the future, ITDI solidly prepares an innovative ecosystem for new knowledge and technology to thrive. We are now aggressively pursuing the institutionalization of R&D initiatives and technical services that are attuned to current and emerging needs and help make us ready for Industry 4.0 or IR4. Indeed, from being a forerunner of science in the country, ITDI has emerged a trusted and competitive industry partner in accelerating national growth and development driving local industries to be globally competitive and help make them ready for Industry 4.0 and ultimately uplift the quality of life of every Filipino through science, technology, and innovation. We are ITDI. Our business is industry.
All right. Thank you for watching our, our AVP. Should you have technical needs under our expertise, such as food processing, chemicals and energy, environment and biotechnology, material science and packaging technology, or meron po kayong needs for training, technical assistance, and testing and calibration, you may send your request letter to our office, address to our director, Dr. Annabel B. Briones, through our email addresses, as shown on the screen, or you may call the Technological Services Division at the landline numbers po na naka-display pa rin po sa screen or through our mobile number. You may also visit our website uh, and to keep you posted po sa aming events and activities like this webinar, please like and follow our Facebook page, DOSC ITDI Updates, as well as yung aming pong YouTube channel. Okay, at this point po, uh, we would like to know what are your expectations or your purposes po for attending today's webinar. Please uh, chat po or comment sa ating pong chat box. Okay, so we can check din po yung ating reception. Ano? Let's wait for the responses. Good morning po, DOSD, Region 12. Okay, uh, meron po tayong uh, reply na. Si Sir Mark Anthony D. Guzman for life. love, safety daw po. Okay. Another po coming from Mr. June Rojas. Ang expectation po niya is magka- uh, Siguro awareness po ito ano, for new trends and technologies po. Okay. Another from Mr. Elvin Lagan. To acquire more knowledge with regards to hazardous management. Okay. For additional knowledge. Okay. Good morning po, Sir Ariel. To enhance my knowledge. Galing po yung kay Ma'am Kaira. Okay. To gain knowledge about handling chemical and safety matter. Right. So marami na pong nag-reply. Safety in laboratory. Learn more about hazardous waste management. Okay, so um, thank you very much po sa ating mga responses, sa inputs. Okay. To ensure the quality of video and audio, highly check your devices and internet connections para po maging smooth ang ating panonood. If you have po questions or clarifications about our topic, you may use the chat box and the resource speaker po will answer your question after the presentation. And for Q&A, we will allot naman po 30 minutes or more to accommodate and answer all questions or concerns as possible. Please note po that we are going to filter po duplicate questions as well as yung questions na na-discuss na po ng ating speaker. If in case naman po na we will be short in time since we start po tayo ng late, you may still communicate with us, especially sa ating po resource speaker after the webinar. Okay. We highly encourage po you, everyone to stay focused in listening to our resource speaker. You may also take down notes because magkakaroon po tayo na post-test. It is one of the requirements po in claiming your e-certificate. So don't worry naman po if in case you miss anything, or you just want to go back to some of the discussion, um, this webinar. So let me introduce now to you our, re our resource speaker for today. He is a registered chemist, earned his Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry from the University of the Philippines, Manila, and Master of Science in Chemistry from the De La Salle University, Manila. His current position is Science Research Analyst from the Environment and Biotechnology Division of DOSCI TDI, where he is responsible, responsible for conducting various experiments on remediation, 
for preparation of hazardous waste for treatment and for conducting seminars on laboratory health and safety. He is also responsible for mentoring visiting students, requesting assistance for science projects and on-the-job trainees. He is knowledgeable in instrumental techniques such as atomic absorption spectroscopy, high pressure liquid chromatography and gas chromatography or HPLC-GC able to do microbiological biochemical procedures such as bacterial identification methods, microbial growth determination, cell culturing, DNA and RNA extraction, agarose gel electrophoresis, RT-PCR, ELISA, ELISA and flow cytometry. Okay. His fields of interest includes organic chemistry, molecular biology, and food chemistry. Okay. He is also able to speak uh, basic Japanese. Okay. Konnichiwa. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sir Bernard Jude M. Gutierrez. Sir Bernard. Good morning and welcome to the Chemical Safety and Hazardous Waste Management webinar. So, um, as I am, as I was introduced by Ms. Karen earlier, I am also part of a group that was that has been involved in setting up the safety and hazardous waste management protocol for the OST ITDI since 2013. We have also extended this to other institutions around NCR. So, but but keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive training course like the ones offered with the uh, Department of Labor and Employment. But this will serve as a general guideline for laboratory practitioners, especially those who plan to be accredited. So first and foremost, why do we need to talk about chemical safety? Now, chemical safety is the practice of dealing with chemicals in a safe manner and in order to minimize the hazard to public and personal health. So from this definition, we can infer that chemical safety is important because it reduces the loss of train staff, equipment, and material, as well as creating a better working environment. Of course, it is also required by the law. So uh, the law that is uh, that we're dealing with here is the RA 11058, or an act strengthening compliance with occupational safety and health hazards and providing penalties for violations thereof, which was signed back in 2018. So in order for us to be safe, we must first recognize hazards. So in a laboratory setting, we'll be working with hazardous substances. So a hazardous substance is a material or substance that poses a physical or health hazard. So health hazards occur when a chemical produces an acute or chronic health effect on exposed individuals, whereas a physical, pro physical properties of a substance determine a physical hazard. So yung mga physical hazard natin ay yung mga flammable chemicals, explosives, pyrophoric, corrosive, and reactive na i-explain i natin uh, a little later. And our health hazards are our toxins, carcinogens, teratogens, and sensitizers. Again, we will uh, discuss this later as the uh, uh, webinar goes on. So <clears throat> hazardous substances fall under two categories acute and chronic. Acute hazards, they cause immediate harm, whereas chronic hazards do not cause immediate harm, but causes harm over a long sustained period of time. So an example would, of a, an acute hazard would be your like hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid, the very strong acids. If you spill those into your skin, you'll get what's known as a chemical burn. So that kind of exposure will cause damage to your system immediately. So agad-agaran siya magkakaroon ng effect, no? Conversely, yung chronic hazard naman, ang example nito yung mga carcinogenic substances natin, like yung benzene or asbestos. So they may not cause harm when you first come into contact with them, but it, it could take years before any effects manifest. But over time, these effects will compound and affect your health in uh, adverse ways. So an example, 
ibang example ng chronic health hazard natin is yung mga heavy metals like lead. No? So if you're familiar with the story of Alice in Wonderland, uh, there's a character there called the Mad Hatter. Now, the Mad Hatter is actually a very um, old expression uh, because the hat makers back in you know, Victorian England used to use lead when making hats. So while they were making hats, what happened was they were constantly exposed to lead and that, co that causes um, damage to the central nervous system, um, driving them insane. Kaya, siya, kaya sila nagiging mad hatter. So that's why it's important to uh, watch out for the roots of exposure. So the, what are the common roots of exposure for the hazardous substances? You have your ingestion, injection, inhalation, and skin contact. So it is important when working in a lab to keep as much of your body covered as much as possible. And we will discuss more on that later when we talk about uh, PPEs. So toxicity is the degree to which a chemical can cause damage. So according to the father of toxicology, para Kelsus von Hohenheim, all things are poison and nothing is without poison. The dosage alone makes it such a thing is not a poison. So lahat po ng bagay ay nakakalason. So kung mga, yung mga mahilig ko sa alcohol, 13 shots ng alcohol taken all at once, mamatay tayo. Uh, yung mga mahilig sa kape, 118 cups ng kop, ng kape, ano na siya, nakakalason na siya. And even water, na 6 liters, na kapag uminom kayo na 6 liters ng water, dire-diretso, eh, may kalalagyan po tayo. So it's not what it's how much so in order for us to determine if a substance is toxic at low enough quantities and to let other people know that chemicals we are handling at the moment are dangerous it is important that all chemicals must be labeled so we've heard of many horror stories wherein children drink from a bottle that is not properly labeled thinking that it's water, then in fact, it's bleach or some other chemical. And they end up poisoning themselves. Likewise, it is very important to label the bottles in your lab. The best label is the label that came with the reagent. But when you're dealing with stock solutions and the like, it is prudent to always label the vessel you are using to avoid confusion. So here are the warning signs present in the labels our chemicals come in. And nowadays, we will see these labels called the GHS or Globally Harmonized System for Labeling. So irritants, uh, it, they are marked with an exclamation mark. So they cause, um, immediate, uh, they co they cause um, an irritation on the area of exposure. So it can either be on your skin or maybe your nose and throat, sometimes even your eyes. So kailangan kapag uh, we're working with uh, chemicals labeled as irritants, Pero tayo adequate protection. Another is the compressed gas, which we will talk about later. So compressed gas in yung mga cylinders natin, like oxygen, nitrogen, minsan may synthetic air. So those are the compressed gases. Toxic, we uh, mentioned earlier, these are the ones that uh, cause um, po uh, poison to us. Corrosive, uh, these are the ones that causes chemical burns when they come into contact with us. So si irritant, irritation lang. Pero corrosive, mababurn kasi meron na talaga damage sa skin, no? Health hazard is also one. Uh, it, there, there's, uh, there's also a different classification for them. Hindi lang sila toxic, parang they uh, negatively affect our health. So environmental hazard, ito po yung mga nakakasira sa environment. Um, oxidizing, um, oxidizing, they are very reactive chemicals. Flammable, sila po yung madaling masudok. So example nito is yung mga alcohol, yung mga uh, hydrocarbons, sila po flammable po yan. Tapos yung susunod po is yung explosive. As the name suggests, sila po yung mga sumasabog na chemical. So mga example po nito, mga ammonium nitrate or trinitrotoluene. So, yun po yung mga explosive chemicals. So, para po natin malalaman kung meron, uh, kung hazardous na yung substances na inaano natin, meron tayong tinatawag na safety data sheet. So, formerly, they were called MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheet. 
So these are documents that outline the hazards found in a chemical and what measures to undertake if that chemical comes into contact with a person. So in some labs, you're not actually allowed to enter the lab unless you can show that you have read and understood the STS of the chemicals you're working with. The STS contains all the pertinent information about the hazards the chemical poses and how to treat it should things go wrong. So there are six kinds of hazards that, uh, that a chemical can pose and they are the carcinogens, mutagens, teratogens, irritants, asphyxiants, and sensitizers. So carcinogens, uh, they cause cancer. So an example of this would be benzene or ethidium bromide. So mutagen, mutagen causes um, other unwanted mutations. So an example, punito, um, an example of this would be um, silver nitrate. Um, when silver nitrate comes into contact with your skin, it causes um, discoloration of your skin. Another um, example would be uh, bromine water. The bromine water um, also causes discoloration of the skin. Teratogen, it induces birth defects. So an uh, uh, example po nito is thalidomide. Thalidomide was actually a drug that was marketed as a um, for pregnant women para hindi sila masukan sa, sa morning sickness. But it, it turns out that it also causes birth defects. Irritant causes irritation to uh, epide epidemial tissue. So an example of this would actually be uh, something like latex or alcohol or bleach. Yun po, mga irritant po yan. Asphyxiant depletes oxygen in the environment. Ito po yung mga gases like um, oxygen, I mean, sorry, liquid nitrogen is an asphyxiant. Tapos yung mga iba natin compressed gases. Sensitizers causes allergy or allergy-like symptoms. So this differs from person to person, pero it might be a no. So on the right here is an example of a material safety data sheet for petroleum ether. So kung makikita natin dito sa may ilalim, no, it's a potential acute health effects, hazardous in case of eye contact, so it's an irritant, of ingestion, of inhalation, slightly hazardous in the case of skin contact, irritant, and permeator. Tapos nakikita rin natin yung mga chronic health effects. So hindi, hindi siya carcinogenic, hindi siya mutagenic, hindi siya teratogenic. Eh, but it is at, uh, it also, it's classified as developmental toxin, possibly. Tapos a substance can be toxic to skin, eyes, central nervous system. Repeated or prolonged exposure to the substance can produce target organ damage. So ayan, kitang-kita sa, MS, sa STS, kung alin yung mga hazards na nandoon doon sa chemical. Kaya importante na meron tayong kopya ng mga SDS ng mga chemicals na ginagamit natin. So one can never fully eliminate risk. no So there is no such thing as a 100% safe environment. And there will always be the possibility of getting hurt in the workplace. This is why when we talk about minimizing hazards, we reduce the possibility of bad things from happening by control mechanisms. Here we see the hierarchy of controls. It goes from elimination of the hazard, which is the most effective of dealing with the hazards, to PPEs, which is the least effective. A quick note on elimination versus substitution. So elimination is the most effective. and It is physically removing the hazard from the workplace. And while substitution is replacing the hazard with a less dangerous example. So an example of elimination would be making your workflow solventless. So some synthesis reactions can be done in solid state using microwave radiation, for instance. So substitution will be replacing um, uh, your solvents, like replacing benzene or diethyl ether with something less harmful, something like hexane, which accomplishes the same thing but in a less hazardous manner. So the next step in the hierarchy are the engineering controls. So engineering controls are things like fume hoods, biosafety cabinets, and glove boxes. Then they protect the end user from hazardous substances they are working with. 
Fume hoods are found in chemical laboratories, and they are a local ventilation device that limits exposure to various fumes, vapors, and dust. So here are some uh, here are some precautions when using a fume hood. So the first is do not lift the sash above the recommended level. So ang fume hood tayo natin meron siyang sash na clear na parang strong plastic. So meron siyang recommended level. You should not open the sash above that level. So do not store chemicals inside because the fume hood has a um, a curated microclimate inside. So Merong, uh, mer meron tayong tinatawag na negative pressure inside the fume hood and storing chemicals inside will cause uh, disruptions in the airflow. Gusto natin parating free flowing your air. And added to that, you have to make sure that the exhaust blows at, the, at an appropriate rate. So the appropriate rate uh, given by the U.S. Uh, OSHA or Environmental uh, Safety Office is actually one, uh, 10 feet per minute. Dapat ganun kabilis lumalabas yung air natin. And finally, you have to keep your uh, fume hood clean. So the other engineering hazard is a biosafety cabinet. Ito naman po for kung yung fume hood for a chemical laboratory Biosafety cabinets are for biological laboratories. So a, bio a biosafety cabinet is an enclosed ventilated work space for safety working with materials that involve pas pathogens require a defined biosafety level. So when you're using a BSC, avoid any activity that can disrupt the airflow within the cabinet. So limit hand movement and refrain from using open flames. Decontaminate the surfaces of the BSC before and after use and make sure that the HEPA filter is in good shape. Now, most uh, models of BSC, especially the BSC Level 2, uh, they uh, actually have an indicator if the HEPA filter has been compromised or is uh, about to be replaced. So, kaya do natin malalaman kung kailangan ng i-replace yung HEPA filter natin. Uh, now, also make sure that your biosafety cabinet is of an, the appropriate type for the biosafety level of your workflow. So the biosafety level of your workflow is dependent on the types of microorganisms that you will be dealing with. So for common pathogens like uh, E. coli, you'll need a BSL-1. So for pathogens like influenza, uh, uh, S. aureus, HIV, you'll need BSC level 2. Uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis needs BS, BSL level 3, and I believe um, SARS and COVID-2 or the virus that causes COVID-19 also requires BSL 3. Yung mga ex, pinaka exotic and very dangerous uh, viruses and bacteria, yun po yung mga, like Ebola, yun po yung kinakailangan na highest safety uh, level, which is BSL 4. So each each biosafety level, meron tayong um, BSL, meron tayong appropriate na biosafety cabinet. So, kung, kung ang workflow po natin is halimbawa BSL2, kailangan natin ng BSC level 2. So, the next uh, way to make your laboratory safer is through administrative controls. So, what are administrative controls? Administrative controls refer to practices in the laboratory that make it safer to work in. These include safety signages and emergency phone numbers in visible areas within the laboratory. So dapat yung mga papasok po ng mga laboratory natin, aware sila na kung ano yung mga makikita nilang hazards sa loob. So... Ang meron din na tayong kailangan na chemical hygiene officer. So, de designated po yan na employee who implements, updates, and administers a chemical hygiene plan. So, the chemical hygiene plan is ito yung mga, kumbaga, yung mga guidelines ng laboratory natin on how to handle different chemicals inside. So, it also includes yung pag-publish ng mga 
ano natin, mga SDS, tapos yung pag, yung pag de- delegate ng mga emergency exits, doon, doon papasok si chemical hygiene officer. And finally, meron din tayong adoption of safety standard operating procedures. For example, yung mga yung mga, yung mga routes of evacuation natin should, an, should a fire or earthquake uh, occur. So these are in place in order to let the workers know that they are dealing with hazards and what they can do in case a hazard happens. So here is an issue we see a lot in assessing labs, and this is proper storage of hazard of hazardous chemicals. And any chemical is a, yeah, for that matter. So when storing chemicals, make sure that no chemicals are stored above eye level. Now, whenever we say this, we magtatanong, paano po yung eye level? Kasi yung iba sa amin, maliit. Yung iba naman, matangkad. So, magsettle tayo sa no uh, chemicals stored above 5 feet. Yun na lang yung, ano natin, yung batayan natin. So, liquids should be stored with secondary containment trays, parang yun na, na, sa picture that have a capacity at least 110% of the capacity of the liquids. So for example, meron tayong 2 liter na bote doon sa uh, chemical storage natin. No? Dapat yung secondary containment tray is actually 220, I, I mean sorry, 2.2 liters yung capacity niya para hindi mag-spill out yung chemical in case na mabasag yung bote. And your chemicals should be stored with chemical compatibility in mind. So, uh, if you look at the diagram below, meron tayo apat na, uh, apat na boxes, no? So, in one box, you have organic chemicals and organic acids. In another box, you have inorganic acids and oxidizing acids. In another box, you have inorganic chemicals, alkali, and reducing agents. And in the last box, we have the oxidizing, I'm sorry, Magkapareho pala yung oxidizing acids. Uh, inorganic acid, uh, well, please disregard the second oxidizing acids in this, um, in this uh, box. So anyway, chemicals of the type within each box can be stored together. So yung mga organic chemicals and organic acids, pwede sila magkasama sa isang lugar. Pwede yun. Pero chemicals of the type that in different boxes cannot be stored together and must be physically separated by distance or a chemical proof barrier. So for example, di tayo pwede maglagay ng alkali and acid in the same location. Kasi if something happens tapos na sira yung ano yung mga lalagyan ng mga chemicals natin, they could react. Kaya natin uh, gustong separated either by distance or by a chemical proof barrier yung mga hazardous substances natin. So another uh, other guidelines that you might need to um, look into, flammable liquids exceeding 10 gallons must be stored in a flammable storage cabinet. So special siya na cabinet na for storing uh, flammable liquids. So potentially explosive materials must be monitored closely for as long as they are in a lab and must be disposed of 24 months after procurement. So actually, um, when we discussed this, uh, someone asked kung ano kung related ba to sa explosion sa Lebanon, di ba? So meron doon kasing isang malaking uh, uh, warehouse na puno ng ammonium nitrate, which is actually a fertilizer. Pero it's also explosive. So hindi siya nakastore ng maayos, tapos meron pala siyang katabing uh, mga papotok. So siguro sa init, nag-set off yung papotok, na set of din yung ammonium nitrate, napakalaking explosion. So, yun yung kind of thing na iniiwasan natin. So, eh, another another example would be, um, twice from my alma mater, no, uh, a few years ago, nagkaroon ng sunog sa Institute of Chemistry ng, U, uh, ng UP Diliman, and also from the uh, College of Pharmacy ng U, UP Manila. Kasi, ang nangyari is, Dahil summer, konti lang yung mga estudyante, hindi masyadong nakita na meron palang mga flammable chemicals na inside a, a room na madaling mainitan. 
So, kailangan kapag nagsistarted tayo ng chemicals, dapat ventilated yung lugar. Tapos, hindi rin, uh, again, hindi rin sila madaling magre-react. So, meron tayong mga tinatawag din na mga peroxide forming chemicals. So, yeah, they're ethers, yung tetrahydrofuran, aldehydes, and acetals. They form uh, very reactive substances called peroxides. And you have to inspect and test containers for signs of peroxide formation every three months. So, ano ba yung mga signs of peroxide formation? Kung medyo nagkakaroon ng discoloration, nagkakaroon ng precipitates under the bottle, yun yung mga signs na nagkakaroon, nagkakaroon ng per peroxide formation. And you need to watch out kasi very reactive yung peroxides and they might cause um, fires or explosions. So finally, we can talk about PPEs. Now, I have noticed a lot of confusion about which PPE you should use for certain situations, if at all. So let's start with the most important, so gloves. There are two common materials that gloves can be made out of, latex and nitrile. Latex, they are more comfortable, they're durable, they provide better grip, but they are susceptible to solvents and they have significant risk of allergies. So I, uh, for, I, would, I, I must confess that I myself am allergic to, aller, uh, to latex. Whenever I use latex gloves, sobrang nangangate yung kamay ko. Meanwhile, nitrile gloves, they, don't, they have reduced risk of allergies and they provide excellent chemical resistance, but they can be easily compromised. So anyone who has worn a nitrile glove knows isang tusok lang sa nitrile glove, mag-fall apart na siya. So, in most cases, we will definitely recommend nitrile. Nitrile has the tendency to disintegrate when it is compromised, but to some people, that's actually a good thing. Kasi alam mo na sira yung nitrile kasi masisira siya completely, no? Uh, that way, the operator knows that the glove has failed instead of using a glove that is leaking. So, ang latex kasi, although mas comfortable siya, tsaka mas durable, uh, hin, hin, mapapansin natin na some chemicals actually nakakatagos siya ng latex. No? So, sa so nitrile, mas maganda yung chemical resistance niya. So, recent advances in manufacturing technology also have, for the most part, eliminated most of nitrile's weaknesses as a glove. So, yung mga magbibili natin nitrile sa market today, mas kasing durable na sila, ay kasing comfortable na sila ng latex at saka meron na silang grip. So, very contentious topic ito. Long sleeve versus short sleeve na lab gowns. So, many people I talk to prefer short sleeves kasi we live in a tropical country, no? Kasi mainit. But I am sorry to say that short sleeve lab gowns have no place in a chemical laboratory. Remember that one of the roots of exposure na mentioned natin kanina is through the skin. So you must cover as much of yourself as possible. Now, an argument can be made that in some workflows, especially some microbiology, you may use short sleeve na lab gown because the workflow requires you to constantly wash up to your forearms. So that is usually what we see in BSL-1 laboratories. But in BSL-2 and above, especially BSL-2 and 3, short sleeve lab gowns will be doing more harm than good because you are spreading contamination through your skin. So recent studies have shown that long sleeve uh, lab gowns are just as equivalent with short sleeve lab gowns in the, in the amount of contamination that they spread. So, mas safe para mas safe parate ang uh, long sleeve na lab gown. So, mas nire-recommend namin sila. So, for safety goggles, again, the maxim applies. The more of your skin is covered, the better protected you are. So, here we see yung mga ano, uh, varying amounts of uh, safety glasses. So, safety glasses, um, pwede siya against dust and objects. Splash goggles against chemical splashes and face shield against possible spray of hazardous material. So, what we would uh, recommend because 
our eyes and our face are very important to us. So for those of us who are wearing glasses, actually in my experience, if there is some risk of uh, splashes, safety, safety glasses are actually like fine. Pero since, for example, personally, I, I wear glasses, hindi kasha yung safety glasses doon sa, ano ko, doon sa, sa lamin ko. So I would opt to use uh, splash goggles. Face shield, uh, hindi naman siya ganung ka required sa chemical laboratory. Not unless meron talaga yung mga pumuputok-putok na mga chemicals. So medyo kailangan natin ng face shield for the, for those uh, purposes. Ito, sikat na sikat to ngayon. Mga surgical mask tsaka mga N95. January pa natin pinag-uusapan to. So, surgical masks, uh, the problem with surgical masks is that they may not be able to, uh, to block fumes, especially in areas without proper ventilation and access to a fume hood. So, in those instances, it is highly recommended that you have a respirator such as the N95 respirator mask or yung, ito pa yung pinaka-basic na respirator. So for a surgical mask, we recommend them against biological agents up to biosafety level two or workflows that don't release ultrafine particulate matter, which is less than three microns. For N95 respirator masks, they are good for ultrafine particulate matter. They're good for toxic fumes and for highly infectious biological agents. So I would not recommend wearing an N95 mask for a workflow that doesn't really have those kinds of uh, hazards. Because if you've worn an N95 respirator, especially nung kasagsaga ng taal and right now during the time of COVID-19, uh, the N95 mask is very uncomfortable to wear and you might have difficulty breathing in it. So while, yes, mas maganda siya and mas long-lasting and mas durable, uh, baka naman mahirapan kayo. So, sa surgical mask tayo pumunta kung hindi naman ganong ka-dangerous yung ginagawa natin. So, moving on to compressed gases. So, compressed gases will expand rapidly upon release, depleting the oxygen in the room and asphyxiating all life. So, ito yung tinatawag nating asphyxian. So, kita-kita nyo dun sa mga picture, meron tayong compressed gas na label, tapos meron ding oxidizing gas, tapos meron ding, uh, I think, flammable tong acetylene, no? So, very dangerous tong mga compressed gas cylinders. If mishandled or dropped. So, actually, uh, sometimes kapag na yung punong gas cylinder, kapag na-drop siya, nasira yung valve, minsan nagiging projectile pa yan, no? Bigla na lang siya lilipad ng kwarto. So, kailangan secure siya. Secure your gas cylinders with belts or chains and ideally using cylinder clamps. Tapos dapat, one to two uh, cylinders lang yung naka yung naka fasten using one clamp at a time. So dapat, kung halimbawa meron tayong apat na cylinder, ideally, dapat individually silang nakasecure, no? Pero kung halimbawa, kulang yung, yung, yung pang-secure natin, pwedeng dalawang tig, dalawang set of two na nakasecure. Dapat at as much as possible in pairs or individually siyang silang nakasecure using belt or chain. Now here is something that we don't see much in labs here, yung emergency shower and eye wash stations. So they allow harmful chemicals to be flushed out if it comes into contact with a person's skin or eyes. So, dapat yung mga emergency showers natin can be accessed from any point of the lab within 10 seconds. The path also must not be obstructed. So, meron kami nakikita ng mga emergency shower na merong parang barrier para daw hindi magbaha yung lab kapag binuksan. That is an obstruction. Kasi kung halimbawa may naspill sa yun na chemical, tapos kailangan kailangan mong pumunta sa emergency shower. Alam mo namang tata, uh, i, you will watch your step pa sa barrier, di ba? So, as much as possible, wag po natin lagyan ng barrier or, or obstruction. When 
if and when na mangyari yung event na kailangan mong gumamit ng emergency shower, ang the hope is and since this, this is a this is actually a very uh, low on the hierarchy, no? So dapat rare lang yung occurrence na yon. So hindi naman natin ini-expect na madalas gamitin yung emergency shower. So dapat konti lang yung ano yung Uh, I mean, dapat, there is no need for us to worry about babaha yung lab dahil binuksan yung emergency shower because it is only in case of emergency. Hindi naman natin araw-araw gagamitin. So it must also able to dispense at least 15 minutes worth of clean water at sufficient pressure at any given point in time. So uh, I know a laboratory, this is from a university, that we uh, inspected, meron na nga silang emergency eye wash, pero pag binuksan mo naman, hindi naman naabot sa mata. So, medyo useless. So, it must be able to dispose, ay dispense pala, clean water at sufficient pressure para talaga ma-flush out yung mga harmful substances from the eyes. So, preparing for emergencies. For in the case of a chemical spill, there are two kinds of chemical spills. There are small spills, which are less than 500 ml, or large spills that are greater than 500 ml, or if the chemical spill is especially dangerous. So, whenever a spill occurs, it must be cleaned up immediately with a chemical spill kit. Now, a chemical spill kit is something that you can buy from the market. So, ayan, meron tayong Chemsorb or has Chem Spill Resistance Response ng Eco Spill. So, meron tayong nabibili sa market na mga ganyan. Pero, marami kami nakakausap, mga government institutions sila, wala silang pera para mag bumili ng, ano, ng chemical spill kit. So, actually, you can make your own. So, uh, uh, an improvised chemical spill kit consists of equal parts of sodium bicarbonate, activated charcoal, and bentonite. So bentonite na bibili yan sa grocery under the pet section, yung mga tinatawag natin pet litter or dog litter or cat litter, yung mga inihiyan ng mga pusa at aso. So fire extinguisher. Fire extinguishers must be present in all labs and must be inspected regularly. So similar to other compressed gases, since it's also a compressed gas, It should be secured to a wall with a belt or chain within 50 feet of any workspace. So for laboratories, it is recommended that you, that you get at least a Class B extinguisher. <coughs> Or ideally, a mixed ABC type. So you know, Class B extinguisher, sila yung nakakatanggal ng flames from flammable liquids like oil or like Uh, mga hydrocarbons and mga other flammable chemicals. ABC is yung parang pinaka-wide range, so it can be anything except for yung mga cooking oils and fats. When using a fire extinguisher, remember yung pull, aim, spray, and sweep or pass. So you pull the pin, you aim the nozzle to the base of the fire, you squeeze the spray, and you sweep around para mamatay yung apoy. So, why do we... Uh, it, meron din tayong for... Since... Uh, let's go to hazardous waste. Uh, just like nung chemical safety, me, meron siyang hierarchy of um, controls. Sa hazardous waste naman, meron din tayong hierarchy ng waste management. So, the most preferable is yung Avoid. Avoid having to throw away the hazardous waste. So this involves the use of source reduction, which is good material management, substitution or process modification. Parang lang yun yung elimination and substitution dun sa uh, hierarchy of controls natin. Next is recycling. Now, you can recycle... Um, Solvents, actually, by uh, nating <coughs> distillation. So you can distill out the solvent that you used para ma-recycle mo siya ulit. 
uh, sa huli na yung magiging treatment and disposal. So, kailangan bawasan natin yung tinatapon nating hazardous waste or i-recycle natin tapos last resort na natin yung treatment and disposal ng hazardous waste. So, let's uh, go through this. What is hazardous waste? So, according to RA 6969 or the Toxic Substances and Hazardous and Nuclear Waste Control Act of 1990, hazardous waste refers to substances that are without any safe commercial, industrial, agricultural, or economic use, usage and are shipped, transported, or brought from the country of origin for dumping or disposal into or in transit through any part of the territory of the Philippines. It also refers to hazardous wastes, uh, byproducts, side products, process residues, spent reaction media, contaminated plant or equipment or other substances from manufacturing operations and as consumers discards of manufactured products. So, paano natin malalaman kung ano yung, yung mga hazardous waste na yan? So, is yung material nyo ba wastewater, wastewater sludge, spent material, discarded chemicals, process residues, byproducts, garbage, refuse, or empty containers, kung yun ba mga hazard, kung yun ba yung waste ninyo, kung hindi, he, they are not considered hazardous waste. But if they are, are they exempt? So meron tayo exceptions sa mga hazardous waste. So domestic and household garbage are not hazardous waste. Treated wastewater effluent is also not hazardous waste. Building demolition material, yung mga panambak natin, except asbestos, is also not hazardous waste. Tapos septic tank effluent and solid from domestic source, mining spoils, and industrial chemical solid waste that do not contain prescribed hazardous waste are also exempt from uh, being considered hazardous waste. Kung na kasakung it satisfies those two uh, criteria, then they are considered hazardous waste. So, ano yung mga ito, ito yung parang pinaka summary niya, no? So, ang mga hazardous waste natin is yung mga wastewater, mga sludge, discarded chemicals, processed residues, byproducts, and industrial garbage. Meanwhile, hindi hazardous yung domestic garbage, treated wastewater, building demolition material, again, except asbestos, septic tank effluent, mining spoils, and industrial commercial solid waste that do not contain prescribed uh, hazardous waste. So, ano ba yung mga example ng hazardous waste? So, the DNR has what are called uh, hazardous waste classifications. So, ito yung mga different classifications ng hazardous waste. So, the first and foremost is cyanides, followed by acids and alkali, um, which are which exceed 2 to 12 pH. So, kung ang pH ng acid natin is, halimbawa, 3, hindi siya considered hazardous uh, waste. Pero kung ang, kung ang pH niya is less than 2, then that is a, a hazardous waste. In alkali, yung cut-off pH natin is 12. Kapag mas mataas siya sa 12, it is considered hazardous. Kapag 10 or 11 siya, hindi, hindi pa siya classified under hazardous waste. Asbestos, cadmium, chromium, and lead should be less than 5 ppm or parts per million. Selenium should be less than 1 ppm. Barium less than 100 ppm. Uh, tin, beryllium, copper, zinc, tellurium, and thallium, and inorganic chlorine except cash, uh, calcium fluoride at any concentration oxidants, reductants, explosive or highly unstable chemicals, highly reactive chemicals, inks, dyes, pigs, pigments, paints, latex, and organic sludge, organic solvents, putrescable waste, ito yung mga animal carcasses, yung mga patay na lab rat, yun, putrescable waste, yun. Oils, contaminated containers, immobilized waste, CFCs and PCBs, so CFCs are chlorofluorocarbons and PCBs are 
polyaromatic chlorinated uh, biphenyls, uh, pathogenic waste like sharps, uh, asbestos, pharmaceuticals, pesticides, and persistent organic pollutants. So sila yung mga uh, specific na, na examples ng hazardous waste. So what must I do if I expect to generate hazardous waste? So first and foremost, you have to designate at least one employee to be the Pollution Control Officer or PCO. So ito required ng training with the DNR. So you have to set up a storage facility that, it, that fulfills these four criteria. First, it should be accessible in case of emergency. Number two, enclosed but sufficiently ventilated. Number three, impervious to liquids and chemically resistant. And number four, properly secured and not easily accessed by unauthorized personnel. So hazardous waste must be segregated by hazard classification and by chemical compatibility, yung, yung mentioned natin before. Uh, all hazardous waste containers must be adequately labeled. So when you are disposing for of non-hazardous chemical waste, so yung mga mentioned ko mga exceptions dun sa ating RA6969, so for soluble salts, except for those of heavy metals, so for example, uh, sodium chloride or um, ano pa ba? Mga sodium salts, for example. In sufficiently low concentrations, they can be disposed of down the drain. And some compounds such as azides need to be flushed with a continuous stream of water for up to 15 minutes after disposal to prevent explosive fumes from forming. Tapos for weak acids and alkali, they can be disposed of through the sewers and they can also be neutralized prior to disposal. So, kung gusto natin, for example, meron tayong acetic acid ng pH of 3. So, hindi siya counted as hazardous waste. Pwede natin siyang neutralize with like sodium, sodium hydroxide para pwede na siyang indispose through the sewer system. So make sure that your waste containers are unreactive with the chemical they will contain. So merong, merong mga instances na nag, nagtatago tayo ng mga, for example, mga hydrocarbons. Tapos nilalagay lang natin sa pet bottle, yung bote ng, ano, ng Coke, for example. Hindi po, na, hindi po yun advisable kasi baka mag-react yung chemical na nasa loob dun sa um, waste and then dun sa container. So, dapat yung mga waste containers natin, yung mga inert. So, hindi pwede yung mga bote na tubig, hindi rin pwede yung mga steel drum kasi nagre-react sila with the chemicals inside. Tapos, again, always store the waste with chemical compatibility in mind. Do not store waste for more than 180 to 270 days. So, kung malapit lang naman yung transport site natin ng uh, final, yung final destination ng mga uh, hazardous waste, pwede up to 270 days. Or in amounts exceeding 1,000 kilograms per storage site. So, dun sa ano natin, storage site natin, dapat yung floor constructed of material which will not react with or absorb any waste or waste constituent and which has no drains that provide a direct connection to the sewer. So, dapat walang drain, tapos hindi dapat siya nagre-react or absorb yung waste. Tapos kailangan din ng continuous impervious core curb with a minimum height of 15 centimeters placed in the perim perimeter of the floor in such a manner that waste will not escape between the floor and the curb. So dapat may parang barrier tayo, uh, at least 15 centimeters high, place in the perimeter of the floor. So, para mag-catch ng any spills that could happen. Tapos, appropriate sidewalls and roof to protect the container from the weather. So, ito yung mga type ng mga ideal scenario ng mga storage containers. So, meron tayong mga safety and salvage drums. Ito yung mga high, high duty, heavy duty na plastic sila yung pwede natin paglagyan ng mga hazardous waste. For used batteries, kailangan natin ng ano, kasi sulfuric acid yan and lead. So, kailangan natin ng very rigid and very uh, chemically resistant container. 
for small hazardous waste containers, uh, kailangan natin ng yung mga plastic na carboy. Yung for used fluorescent tubes, meron tayong mga nabibiling containers for that. Tapos meron din mga hazardous waste transport box. Although these are yung mga ideal na solution natin. Hindi naman kailangan gantong-ganto, pero ito yung parang standard through which ito-judge natin kung okay ba yung paglalagyan natin ng hazardous waste or hindi. So ito yung itsura ng mga sinasabi natin namin pwedeng kami storage site for hazardous waste. Tapos kay INGAC parang meron siyang spill containment. For, uh, just in case na magkakaroon ng spill for ng mga hazardous waste natin. Ito yung um, label na ginagamit namin for uh, labeling hazardous waste. It contains the contents, yung waste class, and the hazardous waste number which you can get from the uh, DAO 98 ng RA6969. It's available through the ENR. Tapos nakalagay din yung name and address of the generator, the contact person, and the telephone number. So the contact person is usually your PCO. And the date when the waste must be removed from the storage area. So punta naman tayo sa waste management ng biological waste. So <clears throat> biological waste should be sterilized prior to disposal. So yun yung golden rule natin. Liquid waste, except those containing bleach, should be autoclaved and they may be disposed directly into the sewer line. So solid culture media should be autoclaved, resolidified, and then disposed through the municipal um, solid waste stream. No, sharps should be stored in a rigid container and disposed of as a biohazard. So actually, marami kami na hikita mga lab na yung sharps nila nilalagay lang nila sa cardboard box. So hindi po siya ideal. dapat rigid plastic po yung lalagyan natin na sharps. So animal carcasses and body parts should be buried or incinerated. Actually, to be uh, to be quite honest, all hospital waste, all biological waste should be incinerated. Kaso hindi yan, uh, yun yung ginagawa na, yun yung ginagawa sa hospital waste sa ibang bansa. Although hindi pwede ang incineration dito kasi dahil nasa clean air act natin. Hopefully ma ma-repeal yun kasi kailangan talaga nating i-incinerate yung mga yan. Pero in the absence of incineration, meron tayong mga ibang-ibang different uh, protocols for handling hazardous waste. So for example, mga animal carcasses or amputated body parts, pwede natin i-bury na lang. So what must I do if I plan to store, treat, or dispose hazardous waste? So you need uh, two documents if you, need, if you want to do that. First is the Environmental Compliance Certificate or Certificate of Non-Coverage. So the Environmental Compliance Certificate is a certificate that uh, you get from the DNR uh, that says that you are complying with the different environmental laws natin. Or you can have a Certificate of Non-Coverage. Para siyang certificate na nagsasabi na I am not doing enough to parang harm the environment. So therefore, hindi nag apply sa akin yung mga restrictions in disposing hazardous waste. So for example, sari-sari store, hindi siya, eh, hindi naman siya nagpo-pollute. So, ang kailangan niya is CNC if in case kailangan niya mag-dispose ng hazardous waste. Yung mga schools, depende yun sa volume ng nire-release silang hazardous waste. Some, schools, yung mga heavily, heavy yung industry nila, heavy yung lab use nila, they might need an ECC. Pero for schools na konti lang yung lab, baka kailangan nila ng CNC naman. Also, if you need to dispose hazardous waste, you also need a hazardous waste generator ID. That document also you can get from the EMB DNR. Only DNR accredited transporters are allowed to transport hazardous waste outside the generator premises. Likewise, only DNR accredited treaters are allowed to treat hazardous waste. So actually here in uh, ITDI, we, uh, we had a problem uh, around eight years ago 
Kasi we wanted to treat our own hazardous waste. So gumawa kami ng treatment plan for our hazardous waste. Nung nalaman ni, nung nalaman ni DNR, we na, 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 na file kami ng cease and desist order. Kasi illegal pala yun. Kailangan accredited treater ka in order to treat hazardous waste. And we were not an accredited treater at the time. So, pina-shutdown pina sa amin yung treatment plant namin. So, in summary, for chemical safety, chemical safety consists of mitigating the effects of hazardous chemicals either by removing them altogether or adopting practices that mi minimize the risk of harm for the, from the end user. Meanwhile, for hazardous waste management, you only need to um, take note of three different tasks. You know? Store hazardous waste in the same way that you can safely store your chemical inventory. You, Depending on the hazard level, chemicals may be disposed in the same way as other waste. And number three, in order to dispose hazardous waste, you must first secure as an ECC or CNC and a hazardous waste generator ID. So what's next? So would you are you wondering if your laboratory is safe? Do you manage hazardous waste well? So ITD-IDOST can help. So the Environment and Biotechnology Division of ITD-IDOST has helped uh, institutions make their laboratories safer and their waste disposal more eco-friendly. So here are some of the institutions that we helped last year. Uh, these are schools that were part of a uh, part of a project to see if the schools in NCR were actually safe uh, handling their chemicals and their hazardous waste. No, So the schools we helped were uh, TUP, uh, RTU, Adamson, PLM, National University, Mapua, University of the East, uh, Polytechnic Un uh, University of the Philippines, Olivares College, and two high schools, Manila Science High School and Makati Science High School. So we are actually willing to be uh, to do the same for your um, institution. Uh, just contact the EBD through 8837-2071, local 2183, and look for engineer Reynaldo Esquera. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sir Bernard. Uh, we will go ahead and take some time for questions now. Ano? Um, just a reminder po, yung question po, pakitype po sa chat box. Okay, medyo marami po tayong katanungan from our participants. Okay, let's start po with <coughs> Mr. Melkar Amplayo. How about flammable liquid below 10 gallons? Okay lang po ba na hindi may stored in flammable storage cabinet? Ay, sir, okay lang po. Um, kaya lang naman po natin iniiwasan yung, ano, yung up, uh, up to 10 gallons is because kapag marami ng flammable liquid in one place, baka it, it already poses a very significant um, fire hazard na. Pero kung konti-konti lang naman yung flammable natin, uh, siguro mga like 2 liters of, of ethanol, Pwede naman yun. Kasi mamamanage mo pa yung fire if in case that it happens. Okay. Thank you, Sir Bernard. Next po is from Sir George. In relation to phase out of mercury thermometer, how can we safely dis dispose small amounts of mercury? To then find has hazardous waste transporter that hold in small quantities. Thanks. Okay, very ano, interesting question po yan. So, yung ano naman, yung mercury, ano natin, actually meron tayong mga, uh, meron tayong mga, I believe the, the ENR has facilities that handle mercury waste. So, I am not 
particularly sure kung ano, but you can contact them kung meron kayong significant amounts ng mercury na, na kailangan i-dispose. Uh, they have the facilities naman. Or you can, um, uh, you can, ano, you can probably uh, contact yung mga waste treater since hindi naman malaki yung ano baka you can manage a ano parang solution with them. Okay, thank you po. And next po coming from okay, galing po ito kay Marvi Hekinto. What is the technology or equipment used to recover solvents po? So ah, okay. So can paints po used in spray painting can be recovered? Okay, so yung nire-recommend namin for the recovery ng solvents is something called a rotary uh, rotary evaporator. So, ano siya, uh, equipment siya na pwede pang, pang separate ng mga solvent para ma-reuse nyo, nyo sila. Uh, ang ano lang naman, ang rotary evaporators are ano, are I just, I know, they're not they're not that expensive pero ang maaano yung problema with getting one is baka tanungin kayo kasi panggawa rin yun na shabu eh so isa pa, ano, parang medyo ano, you might you might need a permit from the PNP just to say na hindi kayo hindi kayo gagawa ng drugs using it uh, yun lang naman yung ano yung ano, for, for the question about the recovery is for spray paints yung solvent kasi ng spray paint i believe is designed actually to evaporate in contact kaya nga pang kapag spray mo siya na evaporate na yun uh, in small quantities you can just outgas it hindi hindi naman siya ganun ka ano la, yung lalo na ngayon wala na halos uh, spray paint na chlorofluorocarbon yung ano yung propellant niya so kung ano kung kailangan yung uh, mag dispose ng ano you can probably outgas it or or kung ano kung marami-rami sila again come get in contact with a uh, with a accredited treater okay next po Ma'am Liovi de la Roca is asking po, expired chemical po ba is considered as a hazardous waste? Okay. Expired chemicals in yung sa ano namin, dito sa ITDI-DOST, ang inaano namin is yung mga expired chemicals kasi, yung, lalo na yung mga konti pa lang yung nagagamit, they are not uh, kumbaga they are not cause to itapon. Ginagamit at ginagamit pa rin namin sila. Pero, meron kasi, meron kasi tayong tinatawag na yung mga grades na mga reagents, di ba? You have your analytical grade, you have your technical grade. Ang treatment namin sa expired chemicals is when the chemical has expired at analytical grade siya, one grade lower siya. So, technical grade na lang. Pwede mo pa rin siyang gamitin but not for quantitative analysis. Yun yung stand namin sa um, expired chemicals. Now, for if you're working in a microbiology lab, yung mga expired chemicals mo, yung mga agar, yung mga nutrient broth, um, those are actually very uh, biodegradable. So, ang um, pwede nyo gawin is actually pwede nyo i-compost yun. Or you can get into contact with our division. Meron din kami binibent ng tinatawag na bioreactor na pwede nyo going up, na speeds up the composting process or you can harvest the, the um, natural gas from the fermentation to use as fuel. So, uh, you can also contact um, Engineer Esquera about that. Okay. Thank you very much, Sir Bernard. Okay, another question coming from Mr. Ray Ramos. Does the government has current program to address the final centralized disposal facility for THWs in the country? 
I believe uh, I believe that is a question for the ENR to answer. So um, since hindi po kami yung involved sa actual na ano, although part kami ng technical working group na na naga advice sa government, I do not believe we actually have a plan at the moment. Pero e, that is that is a question that the DNR can more um, bet can better answer. Okay. Um, next po. Please uh, clarify po as far as PH is concerned. Uh, yung incineration po ito, no, sir. It uh -huh. is prohibited based on its emission characteristics. Mm -hmm. hindi tayo pwede mag-incinerate dahil nga dun sa ano dahil nga dun sa em emission natin pero kasi um, with the march of technology yung mga incinerators na modern actually hindi na sila masyado nag-emit because yung temperatures nila yung mga harmful emissions nang break down na rin at those temperatures so yun talaga yung pinaka um, best way of getting rid of waste no yung incineration pero since hindi siya legal sa ating sa ating bansa kaya natin tayo kaya tayo mag adapt ng ibang waste management processes so again i-reiterate ko lang yung treatment and disposal of hazardous waste is should be your last resort dapat ang first and foremost na priority natin is babawasan natin yung amount ng hazardous waste na ginagawa natin. Okay. Thank you po. Okay. Um, we can entertain pa siguro mga two to three questions. Ano? Uh, another one coming po. Okay. Uh, I think na-answer na po natin to. Okay. Galing po ito kay Mr. Ray Ramos. Accumulation of THW in a temporary on-site storage for industries, labs, medical facilities, and hospital and off-site treaters is a problem. Is there a program coming from the government that address this concern, sir? Regrettably, wala po to my knowledge. Kasi ang, ang stand ng DENR dyan is kanya-kanya tayong pag-dispose. So kahit kami nga na government agency din kami, pahirapan din po kami pag mag-dispose ng mga hazardous waste namin. So regrettably, wala pa tayong, ano, wala pa tayong program in place para ma-reduce yung mga hazardous waste natin. Pero that is something that you know that is a val very valid concern so hopefully in the future matingnan niya matingnan na yan next po uh, last two questions sa po tayo no? since uh, short po tayo sa time uh, Mr. Sam Pareño is asking po how about dolomite is his his is his na ilagay natin to sa Manila Bay Ah, uh, that is a very, very good question. The dolomite, kasi, it is a, it was a very ill-advised, and I, I am, it was a very ill-advised move by the DNR to, to add the dolomite there. And regrettably, if they are, are they already dumping it now? Kung kung masastap pa yan, I would definitely recommend na masastap yan, kasi it will adversely affect yung ecosystem ng, ano, ng Manila Bay. So, sana magbago yung isip nila, tanggalin nila yung dolomite doon. Okay. Hoping tayo doon, sir. Ano? <laughs> Next po, last question na tayo. Ano? Uh, aling po ito kay Mr. June Rojas for a laboratory with limited budget. 
and manpower who is usually assigned as the officer in charge of hazardous waste? Ah, yes, that's a very good question. Usually po, uh, de facto po yan, yung head, yung pinaka-head ng lab. Siya yung, ano, siya yung pinaka, uh, in the absence of a PCO or a chemical hygiene officer, siya yung in charge doon sa management ng chemical safety and hazardous waste management. So here at ITDI, yung ano namin, yung director namin would, would fill that job, si Dr. Annabel Briones. Pero since na-delegate na yun sa for each of our, uh, we have already delegated yung mga, ano na yun, to, to our PCOs and our chemical hygiene officers. So meron na kami noon. Now, in your case, kung wala kayo, kung limited yung, ano nyo, yung manpower ninyo, wala kayo mahanap, that responsibility will fall on the head of the laboratory. Okay, so um, for some questions po, clarifications that uh, we failed to answer, you may contact us through uh, these numbers. Uh, pwede po sa Technological Services Division through our division chief, Ms. Nelia Elisa Florendo, or sa Environment and Biotechnology Division. Okay. Through Engineer Reynaldo Esguera, Chief of EBP. Okay, you may also directly communicate with our resource speaker through uh, the email address shown on the screen. Okay, as mentioned by Sir Bernard, ITDI DOST can help institutions making their laboratories safer and their waste disposal more eco friendly. So feel free to contact us for further assistance. Okay, we would like to thank our resource speaker, Mr. Bernard Gutierrez, for your expertise and knowledge shared to our participants for this webinar and for your time and effort and cooperation. Along with Ms. Judith Tejano, Ms. Candy Valdecanes, and to Engineer Ray Esguera, the Chief of EBB and to my TSD family in making this webinar possible. Okay, some reminders lang po, ano? This webinar can still be viewed for 48 hours after the live stream. We will ask for your feedback in a survey after the webinar is finished. We would like to emphasize that digital certificates will be provided po to, do, to those who will pass the post test. At least seventy percent po ng score ano uh, and accomplish the evaluation form. Make sure that you have registered and accomplished the pretest prior to watching, and expect your e certificates on your email within three working days after the deadline of submission, of course, ng ating evaluation form. Thank you once again for all the participants for your time and participation. Okay, we look forward that you'll be able to apply your learnings from this webinar. Okay, don't forget to like or and subscribe to this YouTube channel to keep you posted po sa aming mga events and activities. Okay, uh, kapag po may mga questions pa po or any concerns, you may uh, communicate with us. Okay, we will be gladly assist you naman po. Okay, so that ends our session and we hope to have you again in our future webinars. Have a good day everyone and always stay safe. God bless. Tumitilaot na ang manok, hudyat na ng pagpasok. Paglilingkod na walang kapalit sa bayan ng aming hati. Tara na, kaibigan, huwag kang magpaiwan. Gamitin ang dunong bansa'y susulong.